So good evening, everyone. Today we have AIMS merit list rank number three in clinical hematology, and that is Dr. Naman Lodha. So welcome, Naman, to the forum, and congratulations, first of all. Thank you, sir. Thank so, you so much. So Naman, can you just tell us about yourself? Where were you in graduation, post graduation from? I belong from a small town, Pali, Rajasthan. Uh, my undergraduation is from SMS Jaipur. My post graduation is from AIMS Jodhpur. And uh, currently in the month of January, I was relieved from my duty and I started preparing for my AIMS, uh, AIMS and NEET SS examination. And, you know, many MD students are in lure of cardio, gastro, intervention branches. Why clinical impact for you? What drove you towards this? Uh, for me, clinical hematology is basically interest. Uh, it came natural to me. My thesis was also on this subject. So moving forward while doing my thesis, while treating patients in our uh, clinic, which happened in Ames Jodhpur, while treating patients in our OPDs and wards, and the subject was keen. Uh, the subject came natural to me and it went like a flow. Gradually, interest became more and more, and I and uh, I thought and I had desired to pursue my career in clinical hematology. Okay, and as far as I remember, there is no hematology department per se in AIMS Jodhpur. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Uh, in AIMS Jodhpur, there used to be no, there is not a clinical hematologist per se. So, in uh, in the in my college, AIMS hematology is run by. Uh, medicine department only so during my uh, three year course um, most of the patients of hematology used to get admitted in medicine branch only so we used to do all the work up their uh, diagnosis part also we used to be keen interested while seeing blood film morphologies and bone marrows we used to ask our pathology friends also Gradually, the interest became more and more keen. We used to diagnose and later on, we have started much more improvement while inducing induction therapies also being planned in our hospital under medicine department only. So gradually, my interest in the hematology grew uh, more and more. That's very good. You know, I, I frequently get asked the students, you know, my college doesn't have a department on hematology. How do I develop interest in that? And it just goes to say that even if you don't have a department, the approach to work up of a case is enough to drive you to that subject because when you have a department, you plainly refer on plans that looking at them. But if you don't have and you take up and own the responsibility of working them up yourself day in and day out, that's when you learn the integrities and the ABC of the subject. So uh, coming to preparation, Raman. I know that your thesis was in HEMAT, so probably since first year, year itself, you were very driven, inclined towards your DNA or malignant hematology day in and day out. But if you have to uh, tell a student as to who is planning to prepare, what, how many months of preparation, how many hours of uh, reading every day, and what sources do you feel is relevant for clinical hematology preparation? For me, sources are very limited. Uh, I used to study marrow, for which uh, uh, I used to th uh, see topics. Most of my uh, preparation phase was in based on questions only. So I used to solve many and many questions that's possible for me. I did all the QBank, particularly the Harrison-based question bank and hematology question bank for the INS SS super specialty. I did all the questions. Modules I used to see which were difficult for me to understand and to for uh, uh, which I don't have that much uh, knowledge about. Rest for me, Harrison was my core uh, core thing from which I studied most of my topics, most of the things, most of the stuffs. Uh, it really improved me and gradually built me to what I am today. And also your your lecture, sir, uh, particularly the CAR T cell therapy lecture, which I which I am really fond of. I have seen it two to three times. It was great. Yes, I I had my adrenaline up when I was preparing the card slides. So 
Uh, I used uh, to be interested in the history part that you always tell for some topics. Most of the topics, even uh, CLL also, you, you you have taught about the history part. That make uh, makes the topic much more interesting. Yes, if there is a story to the film, then the film is interesting, isn't it? Right. So, Naman, coming to the entrance exam, your entrance exam happened in uh, April and then some subsequently you had to face the interviews. So, first going to the theory exam, how many did you attempt? What was the difficulty level? And juggling between medicine versus hemat, which do you feel was more uh, difficult as such? I attempted all the questions. I didn't left any question. Uh, my CML uh, marks was around uh, uh, 52. So my 59 was correct. Uh, and uh, for me, uh, the paper was a uh, mild paper, not very tough. It was an easy kind of paper. <clears throat> so for me, uh, 50 questions were not that tough of hematology. The 30 questions of general that were tough. Uh, mild to moderate, they, they can be told. Uh, Basically, that's what happened. The math questions seem easy to the person who's aspiring for a math because you have prepared for something which is much tougher and if you get something easy, it's, it's obviously easy. So, uh, once you, your theory results came, Naman, uh, you had a step two preparation and every candidate who is planning to give step two obviously gets a lot of chills and rigors because the interview part scares the hell out of everyone. So how did you cope up with the step two preparation? We did have a brief webinar on step two preparation prior to that. So how did it go about? Uh, I attended your webinar. It was great. I think most of the questions which were you were telling only came in the theory part, uh, in the, sorry, in the practical part. Most of the questions, they asked two questions. One was dyskeratosis congenita, which were included in the aplastic anemia and the uh, and the related clinical syndromes. You taught, taught about Fanconi anemia. So it was similar type of question. Another was uh, about a subcutaneous infusion on desferoxamine. So thalassemia also you taught us about that blood film morphologies and other things that you have to read about. So they asked about desferoxamine and its toxicity. So I didn't find that that difficult. It was like uh, because you taught us about uh, like few topics that you have to read before going to exam. Also, you, I think, uh, told us about uh, Win Christine, that image you have given uh, about Win Calcaloid, the plant from it, it is being produced. So I think clinical, uh, uh, the seven, uh, that I got 17 marks out of 20. So it was uh, way easier for me after reading your webinar, I think. Okay. So, Naman, you have worked a lot in Himat. Your thesis was into Himat, so probably it, it came naturally to you. But, you know, for a student who has not got a thesis topic in that, or, you know, not dealing with day and day out with cytopenias, how many months of preparation do you feel is adequate for an INI Himat perspective? I think two to three months will be suffix. Um, because I think uh, in uh, Harrison and Marrow, I can I can surely say no no question can be outside from it. One to two questions can be outside. Uh, I think that are not defining. It will be difficult for other people also. But most of the questions are from Harrison Marrow, and it is suffix that you read only these two things. It's very uh, um, means I don't think anything else is even needed. And from January till April, when you were giving exams, you were completely preparing, or you were working as well as preparing. What was the no, sir. Uh, I was pre after my Gen 10, uh, my course got completed. So I prepared for NEET first. Uh, that was that happened on 30th. So I got a rank 49 in that. So I took clinical hematology in uh, SGPGI Lucknow. After that, I again studied for one month. Uh, one month. So I I again gave the INA exam. In that, I got rank three. Right. So I left the seat months. out there only recently. Couple of months or maybe maximum three months of dedicated study preparation is more than fair enough for more than perspective. A person is not completely exposed in hemat in medicine may require probably 15 days or one month more, but 
probably it's very doable. That's what I feel for. Unlike the MD days, the DM entrance is much relatively easier, not much, but easier. Easier. right. And lastly, Naman, you know, if you have a student who is aspiring for EMAT, you know, in the next session, doing in the third year or just on the verge of completing the third year of MD or DM medicine, what will be your general advice to them as to how should they go about for their preparations? Uh, for me and uh, for all those aspiring students out there who want to pursue him at just just attend your wards and clinics thoroughly read according to the patients what the clinical clinical condition they are presenting follow them read modules or read uh, or solve questions seeing the videos of the people uh, seeing the clinical conditions of the people it's more than enough i don't think so it's uh, anything else is needed. That's very, very, very perfect. Uh, bedside clinical skills can never because be because hematology is more like bedside only. It's a, uh, it's not another other thing. It's a uh, most, uh, most and more people we will see more and more questions we can do. It's like that only. Agree, and you know, in post graduation days, what MD students usually feel is. Whatever comes from the lab is is correct. You don't try to question it. But if you are inclined towards the map, you'll always be having an inclination to go towards the lab, see what they see, see question about it, see the pericles here, see the bone marrow aspirates. You may not know to interpret them, but at least there should be an inquisitiveness, and that is why hematologists are the best lab people amongst all the physicians. Uh, that is what drives it to be a very integrated department with the lab and the clinical skills. So it was great having you here, Raman. Uh, you are rank three, so it will be either in Delhi or PJ Chandigarh for you. So the dilemma will continue, continue until you get the seat, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Both of them are great institutes of great repute. Thank you, Raman. Thank it was you, lovely happy having you and you know, we will meet sometime soon, crossroads sometime soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir.